Soil makes a difference, ask any gardener. And the longer they've gardened, the more attention they're likely to give to it. Soil can determine whether plants survive or thrive, how quickly root systems develop, whether roots winter kill from too much moisture, how often they have to be watered and their susceptibility to pests, diseases, wind, and heat. Those problems won't reveal themselves until later, but sticking a spade in the soil can tell you a lot. If it's hard to get the spade in and the soil doesn't readily break apart, it's probably high in clay. If it sinks in with almost no effort and doesn't clump at all, it may be high in sand. If it forms clumps that break apart easily, it should be good soil. Healthy soil is made up mainly of rock and mineral particles with 5 to 10 percent organic matter and about 25 percent each of water and air. The soil type is generally defined by the size of the inorganic soil particles. Sand has large particles so water and nutrients flow through it quickly and it feels gritty. Silt has medium sized particles that crumble in your hands and feel smooth and powdery when wet. Clay has very small flat particles that feel sticky when wet and pack together in clumps when dry. In the Midwest, clay tends to be the most problematic soil. The small particles pack together and leave little pore space, so it drains slowly and can stay waterlogged for a long time. It's usually low in organic matter and in microbial activity, and even though it may be nutrient-rich, those nutrients may not be accessible to root systems. Rarely is soil just sand or just silt or just clay-sized particles. Usually a soil is a combination of two or three of the particle sizes. Loam is a mixture of sand, silt, and clay in proportions so that each has nearly equal influence on soil properties. Loam soils offer the best of all worlds. The sand particles offer good aeration and drainage, and the clay and silt particles hold water and nutrients. Unfortunately, most yards don't have loam soils. However, we can add other materials, or amend the soil, to improve drainage and nutrient holding capacity. Though organic matter normally accounts for only 5 to 10 percent of soil makeup, it is really important. It contains essential nutrients, retains moisture, and binds particles together in a way that allows air and water to move through. Just as important, it provides food for bacteria, fungi, worms, insects and microbes that help convert it into the vitamins, nutrients, hormones, and disease-suppressing compounds plants need to grow. These microorganisms need air and water to survive, and they in turn create passageways for air and water and, through their excretions, slow their transport so they can be absorbed by plant roots. If you think you have a nutrient deficiency, you can have a professional soil test done by a soils lab, preferably one nearby. If the pH of your soil is much higher or lower than 6.5 to 6.8, nutrients may be bound to the soil particles and not available for plant growth. Regardless of the soil pH, organic matter tends to moderate imbalances on either side, and the best amendment for soil of any texture, clay, silt, or sand, is organic matter. In clay, it forces the tightly packed particles apart, improves drainage, and allows plant roots to penetrate. It enriches silt. And in sand, it lodges in the large pore spaces and acts as a sponge, slowing drainage so the soil stays moist longer. Improving soil is no quick matter, but it doesn't have to be overwhelming either. Keep in mind that most plant roots and most soil microorganisms are located in the top six inches of soil, so we're not talking about digging a basement. Next month, we'll be talking about possible ways to improve your soil. I'm Jan Hingstrom with University of Nebraska Lincoln Extension. This article was written by Karma Larson of the Nebraska Forest Service.